Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm a student from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm here in Iceland with four friends and we are driving around the ring road over winter break. So we were we looked at a couple options for this trip and decided that a camper van would be uh, the best one. So we compared a few different companies and we went with Cuckoo Campers uh, with this lovely five person van that we'll show you now. So this is the van. Um, we try to take our shoes off when we come in so that we don't track snow everywhere. Uh, it's actually right in front of a heater here so it like dries it out overnight. Um, and we have a nice table area here with a sink. Uh, we can't use it because it's it's winter right now, but we can still like, you know, pour uh, dish water and like toothpaste down. This controls the heater in the van. Um, we were a bit concerned about it being cold, you know, in Icelandic winter, but we just turn this on overnight or whenever we're hanging out in the van in the evening and it just comes out under the passenger uh, seat right there. I was a bit concerned with fitting five people and all of our stuff in this van, but it actually turned out it wasn't any problem at all. We've got these two big storage compartments underneath the table. Uh, in the upper one, we keep all of our water bottles and some food and things that we want easily accessible. Uh, and then in the lower, we have all of our like silverware, some pots and pans, uh, a gas stove that came along with the van from Cuckoo. Uh, and it's, it's worked great for cooking all of our meals, and it's really convenient. So this is our, our stove. It's just a simple uh, steel burner. Uh, there's a bottle of butane here. We've gone through about three of them in a week, uh, so not too bad. It locks into place, and then you just light it like that and then you're cooking. This is our little cooler freezer box. Uh, we keep some groceries and stuff in it. You can change the temperature between um, refrigerator and freezer mode, and it only runs when the car is on, but the whole box is pretty well insulated. Uh, and then right in front here, we have some books that we just store and like their travel guides and things like that. So it's a nice setup here in the back. During the day, we have the table and chairs and benches, uh, but these actually, lift up and we've been storing we've been storing our food down here but you could keep anything you want you see there's really plenty of room and then it's the same deal with this one here we've got more food but there's just tons of room for any of your bags or anything there are three seats up front uh, and then also two seat belts in the back for people to be safe while driving during the day while we're driving and we want to have the lower space usable, we just store all of our packs and gear up on this second floor and it works out really well and there's plenty of space. There's even more storage down below these benches back here, uh, although you can only get it by opening the back. So things that you don't need during the day you can put down here. There are also some lights at the front and back right here so that when you're hanging out in the van in the evening you can just flip them on, play some card games and hang out. So there are curtains uh, around all of the windows, so like at night you can close it if you want some privacy or if you want to keep the light out if you're trying to take a nap or something. This is an inverter we got from Cuckoo with the camper. You plug it into the cigarette lighter in the car and it gives you a nice plug outlet that you can use to charge your laptop or anything else. After we found a place to camp for the night, it's a really quick and easy process to turn the table area downstairs into a sleeping area. So we have three people sleep down there and then two in the crawl space above. So this is the wheel, uh, we've got radio, Bluetooth, and an aux cord here so you can play whatever music you want. We opted for the manual transmission, but you could also get an automatic if you want. Uh, we also got this add-on from Cuckoo, which is kind of like a navigational aid. You can just put your phone here with directions and plug it in to keep it charging. Uh, and then there's also a bit more storage space even up above um, these seats for a hat or anything you want while driving. We had seven days for our Iceland ring road trip, but realistically, especially in winter, you might want a little longer because the days are a bit shorter, so you don't have as much daylight to see the attractions. And just taking a few more days would give you more flexibility to kind of take your time, not drive quite as long, get out and hike a bit more. As far as packing goes, uh, Iceland in the winter is not as cold as you might think. It's about freezing but the weather can kind of be all over the place with wind and snow and rain. So you definitely want some rain gear, some waterproof boots, 
uh, and also your warm winter jacket and things like that. Some resources that we found were pretty handy were uh, an Icelandic SIM card, which you can pick up just at the airport. Um, for example, I got a Vodafone SIM card. It, was just, it gives you one gigabyte of data for a month, and it only costs 15 US dollars. We also got a map from Cuckoo that was really useful because it kind of showed all of the attractions that you might want to check out for uh, along the road. There's a website, uh, vedur.is, which is an Icelandic website that just kind of has all of the weather and uh, conditions that you might want to know about. There's also road.is, which tells you what road conditions are like, if they're snowy or icy. Or icy. Uh, in the winter, actually, a lot of the roads into the interior of the island and the highlands are actually closed, so it's good to know that. Of course, we also used Google Maps because it's great for everything. And there's also a website called Hot Pot, which gives locations and descriptions of a lot of natural and man-made hot springs all around the island, which is really fun. One of the major factors in choosing the van was the affordability, because uh, it kind of combines the transportation and your lodging. The van actually gets surprisingly good gas mileage. We only had to fill about two full tanks for the entire trip around the ring road, and we did about 1,500 kilometers. Food costs were also really reasonable. We just went to the bonus grocery store and were able to find all of our food for the week. We cooked all of our own meals, so that probably saved some money. Cuckoo Campers was also really cool because they let us take some free food and other provisions that people had left from past trips. So in Iceland, since they have so much tourism, you're only allowed to camp at certain sites. A lot of the sites are closed during the winter, but you're still allowed to stay there. And we were able to save quite a bit of money by staying at the closed sites where you don't have to pay and only going to the open sites occasionally when we wanted to have a warm shower or Wi-Fi or something. Our group used a lot of Icelandic cash, but you wouldn't need to take out cash. Uh, you might want a credit card without foreign transaction fees. Traveling in the winter is also cool because there are a lot fewer people here, so a lot of the main attractions weren't nearly as busy, and we would go long stretches without seeing anyone else. It kind of felt like we had the place to ourselves. Thanks for checking out our video. If you have any questions, you can follow the link to contact Cuckoo Campers. And we'd really like to thank Cuckoo for giving us the opportunity to make this short guide for our really awesome camper van, which gave us a unique way to explore Iceland.